All right, guys, now what we're gonna do is we're going to take a look at the application. So I'm gonna be doing this from a laptop, but you can do this from a phone as well. The user interface is the exact same. Now, one of the things I should also tell you is that we have a simple app coming out as well. Uh, the app is coming out towards the end of this year, and that app is gonna let you uh, do a lot of this stuff very, very easily, a lot of one-touch functions. This, what we're showing you guys now, uh, is the advanced functionality uh, of Xebo, uh, and it'll show you how to use uh, you know, all of the features um, that are available. Uh, so the first thing that we want to do um, is we want to connect to Xebo. Now, if you remember from the other video, uh, from uh, the uh, LCD, uh, you can get the name of the access point of Xebo. You can also just look at your Wi-Fi networks and see um, you know, which Wi-Fi network is named Xebo. And uh, on, on, from there, uh, you can connect to the Xebo network uh, by using the password. So let's go ahead and do that uh, right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for my Xebo network. So you can see there's a couple of Xebos because we're here in the shop uh, and there are a lot of Xebos kicking around, being worked on and tested. And I'm going to take a look and on the LCD, my name is CB. Yeah, so this one, perfect. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to connect to this guy. Um, and you can see that I've, I think, connected to him before. Um, and uh, no, I don't want to protect it. Um, a VPN shouldn't matter. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to 10.42.0.1. Uh, so this is the IP address uh, of Xebo once you've connected to the network. So once we go to that, and you're going to also get uh, you know, the pleasure of seeing our cameraman, we're going to see the Xebo UI. Uh, so we can see a bunch of stuff going on here. What is it? Let's go through it one step at a time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at tracking. And we're going to start with tracking because it's, it's pretty interesting and really cool, quick and easy to use. And uh, so what we'll do is we'll take a look at the tracking page. Uh, so here you can see our cameraman. Um, so I'm just going to ask him to step to the right a little bit so that we can actually see him. OK, there he is. So what I want to do is all I, I just want to track him, okay? And I'm just tracking him for the purpose of maybe he's a lecturer, for example, or something like that. Um, so in order to do that, I'm going to just select what object I want to track. Uh, so in this case, I want to track his head, okay? So that's what I'm interested in tracking right now. So now what you can see is that there's a bunch of different tracking and a bunch of different detections uh, showing up. And you can see that he is, is being detected. And if he moves from side to side, uh, we're going to see that that detection gets picked up. So the next thing is I'm going to track a mode, uh, choose a mode. I'm just going to choose relaxed. I don't want to track very fast, and I'm just going to run. Uh, now what Xebo is going to do is it's going to follow his face, uh, and it's going to look at uh, you know where his face is in the camera. Now, this isn't necessarily very useful yet because we're not filming through Xebo's feed. We're actually just filming through our camera's feed, even though the quality and the, uh, you know, the output from Xebo is quite nice. So what we're going to need to do that is we're going to need to, I'm just going to stop the tracking. Okay, so we've stopped the tracking, and I have a camera mounted here. So you can see that I've got uh, a Sony uh, mounted to Xebo, and we're going to use the HDMI output from that Sony to help us better understand everything from the UI. Now, one of the reasons this is important is because it allows uh, much better remote operation of the camera. So uh, we'll plug the HDMI cable in uh, to the side of the Sony. Now, one of the important things when you're putting cables on here is you never want anything to be damaged. So always be careful where your cables are running. Sometimes right-angled HDMI cables can cause issues with the controller, um, and you want to make sure that this cable isn't getting intertwined somewhere. Um, so then I'll plug this cable into the front of Xebo. Now, as far as uh, what HDMI uh, devices are supported, most uh, devices are supported. Uh, right now, um, uh, Sony, uh, Nikon, Canon, uh, uh, Zcam, uh, are all supported. We're currently also adding support for Blackmagic cameras as well, uh, as well as many others. Please go ahead and try it, and if your camera doesn't work, tell us about it so that we can get your camera supported. Um, so uh, what will happen is that uh, the camera will pop up on the UI feed, and we'll be able um, to see the camera, uh, the camera feed um, on, on the UI as well. And if it does not, oh, my camera shut off. That would explain a lot. I hope the battery is not low on this camera. Okay, there we go. The battery is not low and the camera is turned on. Okay, so now um, once the camera uh, starts up again, sorry about that delay, we should see uh, the Xebo's uh, feed um, pop up. Okay, so now what we have is we can see the feed um, from our, uh, our camera and then we can also see the feed from the Sony. Now, uh, what we'll do is we want the Sony 
uh, we want to look at the Sony and we want to use it to line up our tracking. So I'm going to ask our uh, lovely cameraman to step to the right again. And what I'll do is I'm just going to zoom in um, this lens a little bit uh, so that we can experiment with the tracking and we can kind of move things. So here I'm going to go yeah, around, around 50 millimeters. So as if this is like a talking you know, shot, at like, a, like kind of a TED talk kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to select to track his head uh, and then I'm going to click run. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is that uh, once Exibo starts tracking, um, Peter is actually going to be uh, where in the frame, maybe somewhere in the frame we don't want him to be. Uh, so he's going to move to the left and right. And you notice he goes out of frame. So we can fix this quite easily um, it, by using the adjustment tool. So if I want to center him in the frame, I can use this tool to create an offset. So by moving this around, we change his position in the camera. So I'm going to ask him to stay still. And he's going to stay still while I move this and get him lined up in our camera's field of view. So there you can see we can go up and we can go down. And this allows us to remotely access and control our camera settings. So then if he moves around again, what you can see is that you know, now he's always staying comfortably in frame because of the way that we've set up the camera. Now, because this is in relaxed mode, if he moves quickly, he can still go outside. Uh, so if we put it in a faster tracking mode, uh, it would obviously track much better. So if we were just tracking someone and wanted to get a side profile, so if he turns to the side, for example, right now, you know, we can continue to track him if he moves forward. Um, and uh, you know, this is absolutely great for, for live streaming of events uh, and for um, uh, you know, creating general video when people are doing presentations and when people are talking. So this is the basic tracking feature. So you can see that it's pretty easy to use. You don't need to have your HDMI connected if you don't want to. Uh, you can just line things up by looking at your camera as well. Obviously for me, the camera's right here, but maybe I wasn't able to be right by my camera. I had to access it remotely by, via the network. I could do that. So I could do all of what we're doing now, but do it from across the room. All right, so I'm gonna stop the tracking and then we're gonna move on and we're gonna go take a look at waypoints. Okay, so on the Waypoints page, we're going to start from scratch. So let's just delete all this stuff here. So what is Waypoints? Well, Waypoints is, the idea is that it's, it's any position you want your camera to go to, and you want to coordinate that or you want to synchronize that with some kind of time. Now, Waypoints can be used for a time lapse. Waypoints can be used for product photography, or Waypoints could be used for creating interview shots or doing anything. If ever you want to program Exibo to do some kind of movement, Waypoints is your target. So in this case, uh, let's do uh, what you might do for a time lapse or also for an interview shot, okay? Because that's you know, pretty common and they're very similar. Uh, so what we'll do first is we're gonna add a point. Um, so it's gonna ask us right away, you know, how, what do we want? Where do we want our, our pan, our tilt, our slide, and our duration? So we probably don't wanna type all this stuff in, that's pretty annoying. So what I'll do instead is I can go here to the joystick and I can actually just move around. Uh, so I can just move Exibo to where I think you know, I want it for the shot. So in this case, I'm going to kind of pan it to the side, looking that way. Uh, and then I'm just going to slide it uh, a little bit um, in this direction. So I'm going to slide it away from the end stop. And uh, oops, sorry, oops, clicking the wrong thing. And I'm going to add a point. So the most important thing to note here is that your very first point is going to have a duration of zero because that's the first point that you're going to. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add another point. Uh, and then I'll explain what all this different stuff means and how we can edit it. So for this, uh, what I'm going to do is, oops, I'll go the other way. Um, so I'm going to slide uh, you know, down the slider. And uh, as we go down the slider, um, what we're going to do is we're going to have that shot set up so that we do this much slower. So right now we're going pretty quick, especially for an interview shot. We may not want to go this quickly. I'll keep scrolling. Now, the nice thing too is that you can see from our camera feed uh, what it is that we're actually setting up. Okay, now I'm also going to set up uh, some pans. So I'm just going to pan to the side a little bit here, and then I'm going to add a second point. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to change our duration. Okay, so what it's going to do is it'll take our first point that we have here and we'll navigate between our first point and our second point. And we're going to arrive at our second point at the time that's specified in the duration here. Now, if we were to add more points, uh, it would arrive at those durations uh, sequentially. Um, so here you can take a look and you can see 500 milliseconds is pretty unrealistic. That's way too fast. Uh, we don't want to do that. That's uh, you know, faster than Exibo can move. So we're gonna change that. We're gonna make this, uh, we're gonna make this 40. Oh, that, that was 20. Uh, so we'll make this 49 seconds. Okay, so that's how fast we want to do our motion. 
Now, what we can do if we want to, we can also edit these points um, by just changing uh, the numbers that are here. Uh, and we can look at things in our timeline. Now, the timeline is not so useful if you only have two points, but if you have many points, uh, if you're doing product photography or product videography, it's very, very useful. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna move back to our first point. So I can click this play button, and what Exibo does is it moves back to its first point. So you can see that happening, and if I wanna check the camera feed, whoops, I keep clicking the wrong button. If we wanna check the camera feed, you can take a look and you can see what Exibo is doing from your, uh, your camera feed directly here. So as it's moving back, uh, we can see you know, whatever it is that the camera's seeing. And you can see we still have our HDMI feed plugged in in the bottom here. Uh, so if we wanted to, we can go back over here and we can see what our HDMI feed is seeing. So I'm just gonna switch feed. Uh, and once, this, uh, once the feed is switched, uh, we'll be able to see you know, through the eyes of our camera instead of, uh, instead of Exibo's camera. So now what I'll do is I'm gonna run this time lapse. Uh, and this is very similar if you watch the video where we talked about the menu, this is the exact same thing. I'm doing the same thing and creating the same process. And what I'm gonna do is I'll hit play uh, and then it's going to run uh, those waypoints. So you can see that it, it was already at our first waypoint and now we're working on our second one. So you can see that our second waypoint is highlighted in uh, the menu, which means that we're currently working on that point. So we're going between the first point um, and the second point. And if you watch the video, you're gonna see Exibo uh, moving across the desk. So it's sliding and it's panning very smoothly at the same time. And the motion is nicely coordinated so that the slide and the pan finish at the same time. So this can be really, really great if you're doing any kind of time-lapse photography or if you're doing um, you know, many different types of product or interview shots. All right guys, so now that you've seen the basic tracking features for human tracking, I wanna show you another tracking feature that Exibo has. This feature lets you track anything you want. So if you wanna track a car, a plane, a, uh, an object, like a person as well, like anything, you can, you can track that with Exibo. Um, so how you do that is very, very similar to the way we did tracking before, so let's take a look. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I can see here through Exibo's UI, so we can see our, 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 our great videographer filming and we can see the, you know, the total mess behind him. So I'm just gonna show you the basics of this tracking and then how it compare with other things as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this garbage can. So you can see that I'm just selecting that on the screen and you can do this through the mobile app as well. And now I have the option to track. So when you select an object, we'll try tracking a couple different things here and see how it goes. You wanna select, select kind of a region with a bit of space around them. So what we'll do is we'll click track. So now what you can see is that Exibo goes and Exibo looks at the garbage can. So you can see that it's nicely set up and Exibo's looking at it. Again, we're tracking in relaxed mode. Um, so we know we're tracking it and we can see the tracking response straight in the user interface. Um, now, this is just a garbage can. It's not really that exciting. Um, so what we'll do is uh, instead, we're gonna um, track uh, something different. Uh, so what I'll do is we've got this monitor over here and you can see me and the monitor doing this video. Uh, what I'll do is I'll track this because it's far out of our field of vision. Uh, we're going to go over to it and you can see, you know, how Exibo pans over and Exibo goes and takes a look at it. Um, and it can track that, you know, very, very well. And you can track this stuff in higher speed mode as well. Now, I'll ask our photographer uh, to just step to the right a little bit. And then what we'll do is, uh, right there is good. Uh, and then what we'll do is I'll track him as well. Now, when you're tracking, you don't have to necessarily track all of him. So in this case, what I want to do is I'm going to track kind of his upper half. So when we start tracking, you can see that he kind of gets registered and uh, the camera moves and it starts to narrow in and it starts to figure out what it wants to track. Now again, looking at our HDMI feed, we can adjust this position so that it's more accurate and his face is centered on the HDMI feed from the camera. You notice the HDMI feed's not in focus, but that's not really what we're trying to do here. So we're gonna move it up a little bit and so you can see now we're tracking him using a different tracking mode. So this tracking mode is not dependent on him being a person. He could be a cat or he could be a car, he could be anything, and we would be able to track him in the same way. So if you need to track something that's not a human, this feature is perfect. And the best part is you can use this feature the same way that you use um, uh, the waypoints feature. So if you wanna do tracking where you go back and forth, that's okay, you know, that works out as well. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope that that tracking is also going to be helpful uh, as you use Exibo. 
So the last thing that we're going to take a look at is I've stopped the tracking. Uh, up here we have uh, a button which says high torque. Uh, you'll notice this is changing in an update. Uh, but if you click this, we can switch between high torque and high speed mode. Um, so what I'll do is I'll jog Exibo and hopefully we can pick that up in the audio. So right now, if you're listening to my mic, you shouldn't really hear too much. I'm moving Exibo pretty fast, so maybe you hear a bit of vibration. But if I put it into high speed mode, you should be able to hear that. Hopefully that's coming through on my mic. It's quite noisy. Uh, but Exibo can move much, much faster in this motion. So if you need to do high speed tracking where you don't care about audio, maybe you're tracking a car or something like that, uh, this setting is perfect. Um, so just be aware of that up in the top. And if your Exibo is being really noisy and you're wondering why, click that button. Uh, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the, uh, the settings page really quickly. Uh, so we'll go through uh, this. Uh, and then finally, I'll show you how you can initiate a homing routine as well. Uh, so up here, we have uh, the ability to connect to a Wi-Fi network. Uh, so what we can do here is we can create a new connection. And you can see that we have all kinds of different connections. So if we wanted to connect to one of these, uh, we click on it, we type in the password, uh, and then we click connect. That connection then gets saved. We can delete it afterwards, but it gets saved here uh, so that we can recall it. So if we have a studio network or if we want to connect to uh, you know, a network that's on site, uh, we can do that. Um, and then you can access the UI from, from anywhere within that network, which is really, really handy. Uh, the other thing we have here is the updater. So here we can check uh, for updates as well. This is super handy because Exibo is always going to be improving. Exibo is a living system. It's going to keep getting updates. You know, we're not stopping here, obviously. And you may want to do that. And we're going to have another video uh, showing you guys how to update. It's very, very easy. Uh, but uh, uh, I would watch that video if you're going to do an update. Finally, we have some camera settings. Uh, so we have auto exposure, uh, and then as well, we also have manual exposure. So right now you can see that the manual exposure is cranked up. The other thing we can do is we can change the camera orientation. You probably won't need to do this because your Exibo is always going to be mounted this way. You can rotate the cam If you rotate Exibo though, for some weird reason, depending on what shot you're doing, maybe you want to rotate the Exibo camera feed as well. Uh, so by rotating this feed, so if I do that, and then I'm going to also turn on the auto exposure and I hit configure, and we take a look at our video feed, you can see that we've got this really weird rotated video feed now. Okay, so I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna rotate it back uh, because that's what we need. Um, and uh, what I'll do is I'll turn auto exposure off just to quickly show you guys uh, the adjustments for manual exposure. And I'll click uh, configure and now you can see it's really dark. Okay, so we can change our exposure for Xebo's tracking uh, depending on what we wanna do. So if we wanted to track a flashlight, for example, we, we could do that. Okay, so now I wanna explain limits. So limits are very important. Limits keep your camera safe and, Exibo, and, and also keep Exibo safe. So when the camera's tracking, one of the things Exibo doesn't know is it doesn't know where your lens is. So if your lens uh, is very long and you have your camera mounted very far back and very low down, you know, let's say that I did something like this. You know, I mounted it low down. My lens is very close to Exibo. Now, if Exibo was tracking, and let's say that the subject moved really quickly and Exibo panned down, it might hit the lens. And that's something that we don't want to happen. And that's what Exibo limits are for. Now, there are some limits in there by default, uh, and you may need to expand those limits or shrink those limits depending on what you're doing. But we found that those limits, for the most part, uh, you know, cover you. Now, one of the other added bonuses as well is that Exibo has a mechanical stopping feature as well that should also protect uh, your camera from any kind of crashes. But if your mounting's weird or you have a different kind of camera in there, uh, you might want to take a look at this to make sure. One way you can check, and I'll show you how, is you can use the joystick to test your limits. So I'm gonna click here, and I'm gonna open up the joystick, and I'm gonna joystick all the way down, or all the way up in this case. So I'm gonna joystick, 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 and it keeps going, and it stops there. So it stopped there on its own because that's a, that's a software limit set. Exibo can move much further than that, it's not an issue. And if I take a look, Exibo's not crashing, and my, my camera is quite safe, so that's a safe limit. So I know that if I initiate tracking, my Exibo's not gonna crash into anything, and my camera, more importantly, is also not gonna crash into anything. Uh, so now what we'll do is we're gonna jog down. Now you can also see at the top, we can see what our limits are set to. So Exibo's gonna jog down, and hopefully, there you go. You can see that we're not whacking the lens, it stops, we're not hitting the lens on anything, uh, which is really, really handy. Now, because of this, 
we may want to change it. So if we've got something where we have a really long lens and maybe we have some stuff up here, or let's say that this is mounted, like I mentioned before, uh, much lower down. Oh, I can't mount it lower down because it stops me from doing that, which is good. Um, then we may want to you know, be in a situation where you know, we can put a different you know, camera on there and change some limits. Now, these limits also apply to the pan axis. Now the pan axis is different. The pan axis, we're probably not gonna hurt our camera. So let's pan and see what happens. So you can see my laptop's kinda in the way here. So I'm now at my limit, okay? And then if I pan this way, I'm also at my limit, okay? So now, this is more important probably for the pan because a lot of people when they're doing time lapses want to time lapse a very, very large area. Now, in order to do that, what you need to do is you need to increase your limits if you want to go more. Now, what you'll notice is that Exibo, if you're using batteries, it can spin more than 360 degrees. This can spin around all day long, but you have to set everything up appropriately in order to do that. So let's take a look at how we can actually do that. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna click on default. So when we look at default, we can see what our default limits are. Now, I wanna change these. Now, there's a couple of different ways that we can. So we can you know, click on them or we can enter it manually. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna enter manually that I want 90 and that I want 90 here. And then I'm gonna click configure. So now I have larger limits on my pan. So now let's see what happens. So now you can see that I can pan much further on my pan and I can go back the other way. So now let's do an experiment. Let's see what happens when we change the same thing on tilt. Okay, because I want you to make sure, I wanna make sure that everybody understands what happens if Exibo does crash and when it does crash and, and what you can expect because uh, Exibo is very strong and it's meant to be robust so that if anything happens to it, it, it can always be recovered. So I'm gonna configure this and I'm gonna manually crash Exibo. So it's gonna make some noises. The noises aren't gonna sound great but it's okay because Exibo will recover from it and Exibo does not get damaged when you hear these noises. Uh, it's internally, it's just the motors making electrical noises. It's not a problem and it is not unsafe for Exibo, but it could be unsafe for your camera, so be careful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pan up. So I'm gonna go up and up and up and what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep panning until hopefully we crash, okay? So you can hear Exibo crashing. Now Exibo didn't crash into the camera. That's the important thing. It crashed into the bottom mounting plate. Okay, now this can happen if you don't set Exibo up properly. When this happens and you hear that skipping noise, it means you need to rehome. Exibo was not set up properly and something is incorrect. And what I'll do is I'll also go uh, in the other direction as well. So we're going and we're panning down and what's gonna happen is you can see in this case, we got lucky. Exibo, the lens was far enough back that it didn't hit. But had this been set more forward, the lens could have crashed into Exibo. So you wanna be very, very careful when you're setting up Exibo so that you don't have these situations happening. So it's best to try out the default limits, move the camera around with the joystick, and then see where it goes. And now I'm gonna explain the homing procedure and what to do if you've crashed Exibo. Okay, so let's say that you had what happened to me happen to you. How do you recover from that? And how do you make sure that Exibo is still safe to operate? If you hear Exibo crash, Bad, and it means you need to rehome and reset up Exibo. So what we'll do is we'll quickly go through how to do that. Now, it's important to know that what does zero mean? So when we were looking at our limits, what you can see is that we have these default positions and it's minus 90 and plus 90. So that means minus 90 degrees and plus 90 degrees. Zero on Exibo is when you're looking forward and when the pan axis is facing you, so it's flat to you. And zero on the slider means that you're all the way to this end of the slider, not the motor drive end, the other end. This is considered zero. So if you're doing precise work, this stuff can be very important, but if you're just doing tracking, it might not be that important to you. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna initiate a homing procedure. So uh, I'm gonna click on the homing procedure button. Now, if you take a look here, what it wants you to do uh, is we want to adjust Exibo so that both of these lights are lit up. So you can see that we have pan and we have tilt. Now these represent the internal uh, homing devices that Exibo uses to know where it is. And basically they're located at a specific position. So you can see that if I jog up, the tilt light gets undone. We need that tilt light to be lit up. So let's move down until the tilt light is lit up. And it's always gonna be when Exibo is at about zero. So remember how we talked about those zero positions? We need it to be at zero in order for that to happen. 
So same thing we're going to do on pan. We're going to pan it until we get to the zero position. Once we're at the zero position, uh, we're going to hit the start homing button, and Exibo is going to go through its homing routine, the same homing routine that we initiated through, uh, through the menu before when we did it. So you're going to hear those chirps. So Exibo is moving. It's making a lot of loud noises. And remember, it's going to crash into the end. But that's OK. It's supposed to do that. Uh, so we're going to let it finish homing. Um, it's going to keep moving. Again, it doesn't take very long. It's pretty quick to do. Just make sure Exibo is facing forward, and it makes the homing very easy. And then it's going to move off. OK, so now Exibo is just about finished homing. Uh, so now that it's done this, you can do everything again. So you can set up your limits. Uh, you, can, um, you, can, you can change uh, you know, how far you're going to let Exibo pan and tilt, uh, and how much you're going to let it go up and down. Now with the slider, you probably don't need to change the limits. Uh, it's more so if you're using the pan axis and you're using it on a tripod. The last thing you should know to be careful of is that if you are panning in circles, watch out for your cables. So your slider cable and your HDMI cable and your uh, power cable. Uh, because this is just something that you're using, it depends on the set you're using it on, depending on what your setup looks like, where your HDMI cables are running. It's always important to look at your cables and make sure that they're not going to get jammed, stretched, or tangled in the motion. So to do that, it's always good to jog Exibo through the motions, and look at where the cables are, and make sure that nothing's going to go wrong. Um, so yeah, so that's a tour of the UI. Uh, once there are updates to the UI, which are going to be available soon, we're going to have a video that shows you guys how to update, and then also what features are going to be included with the new user interface. And again, this is the Exibo Studio interface. So this is uh, the more complicated version of the web interface, uh, and there is a much simpler version that's going to be coming soon. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, and thank you all for watching.